are running smoothly and that end users are having an excellent user experience. And there are definitely some tricks in here that, uh, that you uh, will benefit from. So with that, let me launch into it. Just one second while I get my computer to cooperate here. Very good. So uh, I'm going to use this analogy. I've been uh, using this with my friends, and uh, it's time to use it here now on the webinar. Uh, they ask me, you know, uh, when it comes to performance management, really, what are the challenges there? And you know what the challenge is? It's piecing together the picture. Now, if you're familiar with the print world, um, right, you have um, you take a you take a picture and then you separate that into the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Right, so CMYK. When that goes to a printer, they're going to have four plates. One will just be applying the cyan. The next will be applying the magenta, and so forth. The now, the end of which you hope to have a really nice looking full picture uh, printed on the piece of paper. Now things can go wrong in that process. What if the registration is off a little bit? From the cyan plate, from the cyan plate to the magenta plate. Well, then you're going to be throwing that piece out. So, uh, in a very similar fashion, when you're talking about monitoring and and maximizing your IT investment uh, for your Zen App environment, we want to ideally be collecting information from a number of key components that are in your IT infrastructure. Because if you look at just one of those components, you will get a picture. But it won't be the best picture possible, right? If I'm just looking at the Zen App server itself, it will tell me about um, uh, uh, groups, it will tell me about applications it's running, it'll tell me about users, and I do have a picture there, right? But when I combine that with the information that I'm getting from my network switches, now all of a sudden I know what it's like for those users when they're interacting with those applications because the network sees all the traffic coming and going. It sees the throughputs. It sees the ACKs. It sees the NACs. And so the picture becomes a little more clear. And similarly, when you factor in information that can be collected from your storage system, from the hypervisors, from the NetScaler ADC, uh, all of this comes together to create a better and better picture of what's going on in your environment. So I'm putting this analogy up front because I'm going to be using it throughout the presentation. We want clarity means we want more metrics, more data to bring the picture into focus. So now let's talk tech. This is the typical uh, Zen App IT infrastructure that we're seeing uh, that our customers are running. Of course, the most important element of this infrastructure is the human element. It's the people, the users, because it could be said that all the reports on what's going on in the data center can be shredded and thrown away if the users are complaining. Right. Ultimately, the test of a, of a healthy and vibrant Zen App infrastructure is the experience that the end users are having using that infrastructure. Now, looking down into the infrastructure, into the data center, of course, you're going to have your Zen App servers. You know how it is, a collection of servers that work together to provide those Zen App services. Right? And then uh, from them, we can collect some interesting information to get a picture of what's going on. We can get information about applications, groups, and users, and servers. Now, if you've got Zen App servers, you're probably going to have some, uh, you might have some VDI servers as well, and so you're probably going to want a solution that can, you know, uh, work across both of those. Uh, you could have people doing, you know, hybrid mixes there. Um, or maybe you've taken your Zen desktops and you're just running them right from Zen App. So there's a couple of ways to go there. Another important component, of course, of the IT infrastructure is going to be your hypervisors because uh, these, uh, these are uh, running all of the services of the Zen app. You, tip, you know, you're going to want to run as virtual machines rather than on physical machines a lot of the time. So from the hypervisor, we get information about its CPU, its memory utilization, its memory swap, and we get information about the guest VMs that it's running. And then ideally, you would be able to reach into those guest VMs and say, hey, guest VM number five, how you feeling? How's it going today? Are you getting, you know, are you getting all of the SLAs that you've been promised and expect, right, as an indication of health? Now, 
The IT infrastructure is quite complex and interrelated, and this is partly the challenge in performance management. When something crops up, it's like, oh my God, where's it coming from and how do I fix it? Right? That's the relevant question. And so there are other services that come into play, uh, Active Directory or a DNS server, um, things like this, that are all part of the orchestrate, orchestration of providing those virtual applications out to those end users. Now, of course, the network switches, if you can interrogate them and get good information from them about throughputs and latencies and health, that's going to be very vital because the, uh, the network switches are essentially the circulatory system of your data center. And uh, you, know, you can do a lot with a blood test. You can figure out a lot of things that are going on because of information that travels through the network. It is necessary, um, but not sufficient to have an excellent picture of what's going on. And lastly, if you have a, a, a NetScaler, ADC, it provides some really good information about the, the throughput and IOPS and so forth. And we're going to talk about that. So this is the environment that we're talking about here, uh, the complex data center with all of its interrelated components. Um, you ideally are going to, to ensure the health of this environment, collect information from all of these components. And, but maybe more importantly than that is collecting information about the users and the experience that they're having using their virtual apps, because that ultimately is the most important thing. So, tip number one is my lightest tip, which is keep current on your Citrix technologies. I mean, I almost didn't even put this in because it's like, yeah, we probably should do that. Do you have anything, uh, you know, important to say? Well, you know, uh, we've got our, our other tips two through ten coming, but you know it's very important that you keep track of what's going on in the in the Citrix uh, ecosystem. Uh, you've got uh, uh, latest releases of Zen app that are coming out, providing uh, awesome new capabilities uh, that allow you to see what's going on. Uh, the NetScaler uh, has been uh, is a very vibrant part of the Citrix product line and can do great things for you. I'm actually going to speak about that a little bit later. So you have to ask yourself, you know, are you where you're supposed to be on your Citrix technologies, or is it time to do some technology refreshes on some of these components so you're always up on the latest? So you've got the latest capabilities and the, and, and the best ability to monitor and keep the environment running smoothly. Now this is the first big one here, okay? The tip is, and what we're finding from our customers, again, these are Fortune 500 companies that use Zangadi. When the, when the environment gets huge, people use Zangadi. They've got to, because it's the solution that's gonna scale for them. So, so what we've got here is uh, the concept of dividing the world in two. So if you take that ADC, um, and uh, whether you're using Zangadi or any other performance management solution, you take that ADC, that lets you divide the world in two. So now you can look from the ADC East, you can look from the ADC West. Now, East is going to be uh, out to the users and their mobile devices. West is going to be looking into the data center. Now, uh, the way this NetScaler works is all the traffic flows through it. So uh, when a transaction is leaving a user's mobile device, and maybe they're on a smartphone, maybe they're on a tablet, perhaps they're on a thin client or you know a desktop or some notebook computer, whatever they're using, when the transaction leaves their computer, it does have a timestamp on it. And the NetScaler knows where it's going. So it sees that transaction come in, and it knows when it arrived. So now we know the time from when it left, to when it arrives at the net scaler. Well, that tells you something. And then the transaction continues on its way down into the data center, pinging around with uh, you know, the, the, uh, all of the interactions of the complex components that are in the data center, and eventually the answer is produced. And the answer has to go back through that ADC on the way out. And the ADC just says, well, how long did that take? How many milliseconds was that before wh 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 when, the, when the transaction came in until the answer went back out? And so you get really good information about uh, the throughput that the users are experiencing, the latencies, end-to-end, -end, the latencies that they're exp experiencing, how things are changing over time, if it's, you know, uh, uh, if it's varying, you know, that's called jitter, and just the overall health, how many acts, how many NACs. Let me just sort of underscore how important this is. Joe in Chicago calls, and he's having an issue with his virtual application. 
And uh, if you only had tools that could look at your data center, you'd look around and you'd be like, I don't see it, Joe. And now Joe's getting even more aggravated because you are not helping Joe out. So if you had a NetScaler in place, however, you would be able, and appropriate monitoring tools, then you would be able to immediately see that Joe is on a network that is like one of the worst networks you've ever seen in terms of its throughput and its reliability. Turns out he is having problems running his virtual app. Turns out he's on a train and he's underground. Okay, so the problem is not in the data center. It has been isolated. Or maybe Joe's connection's fine. And it turns out there is something that's in the data center that's jamming up. And it might not be the server you think. It might not be the Zen app collection of servers that are running those services. It might be down in the storage system. It might be one of those supporting servers that I was talking about, a DNS server, uh, an Active Directory server, something like that. So you've got to divide the world in two so that you can truly look through the eyes of the end user and you can divide that problem in terms of, you know, okay, where do I have to start looking? And the ADC lets you do that. Now, there's lots of other things that the ADC does for you as well, which are beyond the scope of, of, uh, of this talk. Tip three is use an agentless approach. We hear this time and time again from our customers, so I assume it's pretty universal out there with everyone that's running a, a, you know, a large IT infrastructure. They hate agents. Why? Well, we all hate agents because you, inst you have to install them onto uh, your various servers, and that might require that server to be rebooted. Oh, really? Well, that server is scheduled to be rebooted three months from now. So you're not going to be collecting any information from it for three months. No, Sam and IT, come on, do me a favor, just reboot that server now. No, no, I'm not going to reboot the server for three months on its normal schedule. So you're going to have issues getting agents running because of server reboots that are needed. Let's say you get through all that and you get that agent installed and running. And then you get a new version of your monitoring software and now you've got, oh my God, I've got agents over, over uh, dozens, possibly hundreds of places and, uh, and these agents are now, some of them are up to date, some of them are not up to date. That's a nightmare in the making. So no one wants to go through that. And lastly, agents are absolutely horrible on the user devices. Remember, they're on a cell phone. They're on a tablet. These things care about how long they're going to run on the battery. And so they don't have a lot of power. And to have to run an agent on that device is going to suck its power down. So uh, one of the good things, this is another reason why a NetScaler is awesome. As you're looking on the right uh, side of the diagram here, I wanted to depict this, that you might be thinking, how can I get an end-to-end -end view of my data center if I don't put an agent onto the client device? And the answer is, the NetScaler will tell you everything you need to know about that, about the leg out to the, the client device. So you can collect that information from the NetScaler, and therefore you will not have to put a, uh, an agent out on those devices. The other thing is, you know, those devices uh, for many organizations are BYO. So, uh, it, you know, someone shows up with a new tablet, they want to start using virtual apps, oh, the client isn't there, more hassle, right? So where's the agent that needs to be there? So the agentless approach is, uh, is generally uh, considered to be the, the way to go. The next thing we want to talk about are thresholds because in a typical ZenApp environment, people have thousands, we have customers certainly here at Zangati that have hundreds of thousands of metrics that are being collected on a second by second basis. And so that's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of metrics. And every one of those metrics, whether it's coming off a Zen app server, whether it's coming off a hypervisor, whether it's coming from the storage system or a switch, every one of those metrics is set to a reasonable value. And if, if, if in the course of operating, um, uh, we exceed a threshold value or we go under a threshold value, well, that's an alarm because we're out of the norm. But what is norm? You know, norm on Monday morning is not the same as norm on Thursday afternoon. 
these things vary over time. So what are you going to do? Uh, every day, log in morning and afternoon and change the value of this metric uh, for what normal should be, what safe and sound and healthy should be on 100,000 metrics? No, 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 no. You're not going to do that. So, so tip number four is dynamic thresholds are your friend. Uh, what happens is they can be set initially based on industry best practices. And ideally, the monitoring solution, as it's running, you know, it's going to be different for everyone, right? Each environment, each company that's running ZenApp, you know, they're going to have a different uh, way they're hitting it in a different profile. So ideally, your, uh, your, your monitoring solution is going to be able to learn, be self-learning, and take this information in over time and piece that together, and then change those threshold values. So we combine in the beginning, industry best practices are good because they're better than nothing. But once you're able to start collecting metrics from your infrastructure, then you want those thresholds to start adjusting themselves dynamically. And so this is, uh, this is something to look for. The last thing I want to say about this, because because I have a graph up, is uh, that the granularity is very important. Obviously, if you're collecting your metrics every five minutes, uh, that is going to be, to many people, useless, absolutely useless. Because we know, for instance, that once a user gets two seconds of delay, they are unhappy. At five seconds, they are absolutely furious. And uh, so if you're measuring every five minutes, are you going to catch the event that happened that created the five-second latency problem? No, you're not going to catch it if you're only measuring every five minutes or every ten minutes. So. It's important that you uh, collect this information second by second and that the thresholds be dynamically adjusting themselves. So then an event occurs, right? We go under a threshold, we go over a threshold, or, and I'm going to get to this in a minute, some users just aggravated and they want to you know, create a report about what's going on. So in, in all of these cases, um, you know, at the time of the event, you know, someone's going to have to figure out what happened. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, um, there's nothing like a recording. Uh, I go along, for instance, the way I watch TV is I'm watching the show, I'm kind of paying attention, I'm working on my notebook, and then all of a sudden, bing, I hear something that I want to know about. Thank God I don't work in real time anymore. I just take my DVR at home, and I just go back a couple of minutes, get the context I want to listen to the thing that was of interest. This is how it is with monitoring environments. If you've got hundreds of thousands of metrics, you can't record every single one of them for every second for all of time. That's like way too much data. What you want to do is when a threshold is crossed, give me the last 15 minutes of what happened, right? And ideally your tool would, you know, you could vary, you know, what that time span is. But let's just go with 15 minutes of recording right now. So bam, an event occurred and I have a 15 minute recording. Uh, what is in that recording? Uh, what's in it is every metric that was collected for every second for that 15 minutes. And so now what you're going to do is you're going to take that recording, it's going to go to the help desk people, and they're going to uh, uh, grab that recording and start going through it to find the exact point in time when the, uh, when the issue arose. And once they find the point in time, drill down to find out what caused it. What was going on with every single thing in my IT infrastructure at that second? And ideally, you'd have a tool that could give you that kind of vision and insight. Now, as an advertisement, certainly the Zangati does this. And this is the type of thing, these powerful recordings that people crow about, they write about, they want to be quoted about. You know, it's very, once you have it, oh man, you can't live without. It's like me, how can I watch TV without a DVR? Ain't going to happen. I'm not doing real time again. Real time's no good. So these recordings are very useful for tracking down problems and resolving them quickly. Sam is your best troubleshooter. You know Sam can find any problem. He's a god. He can find any problem. If it's really difficult, it might take him two days, but he will find it. You know what? Give Sam a recording. Bam. He's done in a few minutes what used to take him a couple of days. Sam is very happy, and Sam is working on other things that are higher value for the IT department than, you know, chasing bugs and trying to figure out where it's coming from. The recording is the key. So look for those if you can get them. 
Now, uh, the other thing is, you know, end users, you know, recordings are the type of thing that happen when a threshold is crossed, so that's all automated. But, you know, it's great to, uh, to look through uh, the eyes of the end user, but sometimes it's good to let the end user just come right in and tell you, hey, I'm aggravated right now. And, uh, and so um, uh, at Zingati, what we did is we built into the product um, this thing called a visual trouble ticket. And this is just a URL that people can go to, fill out the fact that they're having an issue using their virtual applications, and then what automatically happens is a recording is captured, and it is attached to that visual trouble ticket, and it goes off to the help desk. In fact, you know, with our trouble ticket capability, we can then see that all the way through it's being resolved. So um, this, is, this is a great thing to offer people. Uh, the ability to, um, you know, just come in and express when they're having a problem. Because once they express that, you've got a recording. You don't really need to talk to them. Once they just issue the trouble ticket, you can grab the recording and find out what's going on. Uh, life is good all around. Okay. So now real-time dashboards, of course, are the bread and butter of uh, performance management systems. So I just want to show you a, a good example of a, of a real-time dashboard. This is one from Zangati, of course. And uh, let's take a look at what's going on here. So we've got some rows, and these are the things that are being monitored. Things like hosts and networks and data stores and servers and switches. You can see it all on the left there, right? And so then each of those components has a certain health that's going on with it. And you really want to think about three things when it comes to health. You want to think about what's my performance looking like, because, you know, bad performance makes end users aggravated. Then you want to ask yourself, if my performance is great, but I'm up again, down again, and I have availability issues, that's not good. So maybe you've got plenty of performance, but you've got availability issues that you need to address. And lastly, it's like, how much am I getting out of my existing IT infrastructure? Am I stressing it to about the 50% level, in which case I can put more on it and I'll be okay? Or am I pretty much pushing it now? Um, so that is the amount of capacity that you're using up at any given time. You want to have some headroom there. You don't want 50% headroom because that means you're, just, you're not getting the best return on your IT investment. You probably want to crank that thing up to about 80% utilization to ensure that you're getting the most from your investments. So those types of, you know, uh, those types of numbers are very useful. So drilling down into the details, though, you can get lost in the sauce, right? You can get down into the woods. You don't know where you are anymore. So to get that more global perspective, what Zangati does is we sum it up into one total health score, which you see at the top there. So where you see 88, okay, you're interested to learn more. You look down and you see, aha, storage server issue. That's where I've got it. Now, you know, these dashboards, they're rolling, right? They're constantly, data's coming in, and the dashboard's updating, and you're not paying attention. You're doing other things. And then something happens where you need to pay attention. So that's where you're like, I hope this dashboard was a DVR, that it wasn't just coming in real time and then disappearing. And, and with the Zangati dashboards, they are. Every single one is a DVR. So you just grab that little slider on the bottom. You can go back in time, forward in time. You know, if, there's something, if something's happening now that is getting your interest, you probably want to see what was happening a little while ago in order to get to the bottom of it. So look for those real-time dashboards, which everyone has, but look for summary information and look for DVR capability because if it's just all whizzing by, it's just going to be more aggravating for you that the dashboard caught something and now you can't see what caused it. Uh, and here's an example. Since we're drilling down, right, we've already got it. We've already got an issue that we've identified um, and it was that storage system, so now it's like, okay, take me down. I want to look at a more detailed level now. And so here uh, we're looking at the virtual app uh, dashboard. This is, you know, again from Zangati. And uh, you can see the app users here. You can see the applications that are being run. You can see the servers that those applications are actually running on. You see the app clients, right, all the summary information. So some of the information we get from the actual Zen app server itself, but then you notice that we factor in the information as well that we're getting from the NetScaler and other components of the IT infrastructure, like the networking and the storage systems and the supporting servers and such. So this gives you the ability. This dashboard is actually much bigger than what you're seeing on the screen. You can you know scroll around and get different information up there uh, for the particular troubleshooting that you're looking for. 
And lastly, you might want a dashboard that gives you this kind of a view here. And this is, this is really bringing out some of the valuable information that the NetScaler is collecting um, because you're seeing the rows are the actual users and then the columns are information collected from the NetScaler. Um, and uh, information about, you see on the far right there where it starts kicking in, right? Information that's uh, from the ADC out to the clients and then from the ADC into the data center. That's what I was saying on point two is, you know, divide the world in half and then you'll be able to chase these problems down more effectively. So just some examples there. Okay. So dashboards are going by, you're seeing the overall health, and uh, then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. And you see on your alarm dashboard, 60 alarms hit, and now you're in a panic. Uh, you have got to resolve this issue, this is your task, this is your role on the team, how fast are you going to be able to do it? Well, start. look at the first alarm, take a look at that and consider it. Look at the second alarm, take a look at that, and, and do that down to 60 alarms. That is not a good algorithm. What you need is a tool set that is going to be able to tell you which of those alarms are the ones you're going to look at. Well, wait a minute. How could a tool set possibly be so intelligent as to know, out of a sea of 60 alarms, which one is the most important? The key is to know the dependencies. You know that at the bottom is a storage system and that there are hypervisor servers that depend on it, that there are guest VMs that depend on the hypervisor servers, and that those guest VMs are being used to run ZenApp services, and that those ZenApp services are using, being used by end users. So a good tool will, A, auto-discover your entire environment, and B, understand the dependency chain. So if you get into a situation where your storage system has a disk that goes bad, and so you're in a RAID rebuild, well, guess what? When a storage system's in a RAID rebuild, its performance can go down by ideally 10%, but I've seen 40% uh, decline in performance because a storage system's in a RAID rebuild, especially if it was a stressed storage system to begin with, right? So that's what you need to fix is the storage system issue, and then all the other alarms are just going to go away. So ideally, you would have software that knows the dependencies and can tell you out of an alarm storm which one is the root cause, right? Turn that one red. And in addition to that, wouldn't it be ideal if your monitoring solution could also then say, to make that red thing go away, do this. Here are the steps, IT person. If you do this, the red thing goes away. That's just, that's wonderful. That is, that is a best case scenario. So look for tools that can discover root cause and give prescriptive remediation advice. And so nine. Now this, this, this one is interesting to me. You know, the ability to predict the future is uh, something that's normally in the realm of metaphysics, something that's like Houdini kind of stuff. You know, is it real? But uh, when you think about it, um, if you're collecting a lot of information on your environment, you're going to be able to see trends, right? If you're intelligently looking at that information, trends will begin to emerge. So let's say you've got a particular metric that goes over a threshold value. It stepped over the line. But then, like, three seconds later, it stepped back. Well, that's a small incursion, right? It, over and back in a couple of seconds. It's like it's a little problem. It's not a big problem. Let's say you have a metric that goes over a threshold and stays over that threshold a little while, but not by a lot. Or let's say it's staying over the threshold for a long period of time and it's way over the threshold. So you see, every single alarm that is raised has a certain urgency and severity to it. So ideally, you'd have a manage, uh, management solution that tracks these resource contention storms. Is it a small incursion, in which case I can just like go pay attention to something else? Or is it starting to mount? Is it starting to grow and become more and more of a problem to the point where I've got to do something about this? I either need to reset that metric or I need to make some uh, adjustments into my IT infrastructure to ensure mm -hmm. that the big alarm storm of the future doesn't happen, right? So by looking at these trends, you can extrapolate out and see what a possible future might be. But as, as long as you have remediation steps, 
you can make the bad future not happen and make sure that all of your users are happy and avert uh, problems that could be occurring out in the future. So it's not Houdini stuff. It's like, can you extrapolate? That's what it's about. And uh, so good tools will be able to do that for you. There's a lot that goes into being able to do that, no question. Um, we have uh, people in machine learning specialists here at Zangadi that you know have spent a long time thinking about these subjects and how to actually understand what's going on and, and, and do these future predictions. Um, so uh, that's definitely a, a good thing that can be working for you. Okay, now reports. Reports are the bread and butter of of performance management, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of solutions out there, practically all of them, will deliver reports. But it's important to understand what reports are good for and what they're not good for. So what you want to think about is the best analogy that I've been able to come up uh, with on this, which which I sort of came to me at VMworld recently, is that. Uh, a report, when you get a report on your IT infrastructure, it's like reading the Wall Street Journal. This is what happened yesterday on Wall Street. Right? Great. It's good to know what happened yesterday on Wall Street. You can plan based on things that happened yesterday on Wall Street. You can plan um, future server purchases that you need to make. You can uh, 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 accelerate IT purchases. Um, make the right IT purchases. For planning, for forward planning uh, uh, purposes, there's nothing like a report. Also, if you're uh, an MSP, you can have reports that can be emailed out to your clients so that they uh, can feel good that, you know, everything's on track. You know, how utilized am I? How available am I? How's the performance looking in general? You know, so they're good for things like that. Um, but uh, when the going gets tough, and Joe from Chicago calls you, and he's getting a five-second latency using his virtual applications. Turns out Joe's the CEO. Um, these reports aren't going to do a damn thing for you. Uh, you need a whole other class of technology to, to uh, resolve that issue quickly. What you need is real-time dashboards. What you need is recordings, what you need is visual trouble tickets, what you need is to talk to a net scaler so you can divide the world in two, then you're going to be able to resolve that issue very quickly. So a written report does not make for happy end users. It helps you to plan your future purchases, so just make sure that, you know, you're using each tool correctly and for the, you know, for the purpose that it, that, that it was really designed for. So then, uh, just summarizing then, these are the top 10 tips that we're getting back from our customers. And our customers represent the largest Zen app installations in the world. Because when you need scale and you need second-by-second -second granularity, you turn to Zangati. It's just, I mean, everyone knows that. So the tips are keep current on your latest Citrix technologies, divide the world in two, uh, NetScale or ADC is the way to do that so that you can really understand the user's perspective. Use an agentless approach so that you don't drive yourself crazy uh, administering all of this, and also dynamic thresholds of your friend because you don't want to be manually adjusting hundreds of thousands of metrics for every hour of the day of the week. Record everything. Look for a tool that's DVR-like because when the event happens, you're going to want to go in and have your specialists inspect that carefully. They're going to want to go back in time so they can see why that event was happening. And once they get to that event, to that exact second, that offending second, they need to drill down. They need to, they need to be able to very quickly bring up all the information on every single thing until they find the culprit, until they find the smoking gun. Look through the eyes of the end user. You, you know, it's no good to say, hey, the data center is running well. I've got a monitoring solution that's looking at the major servers, and it seems happy. That doesn't matter if Joe in Chicago is getting a five millisecond delay. Um, you need to be looking through the eyes of the end user. That is ultimately the test of the health of your environment. Use those real-time dashboards, varieties of them, high level, you know, health at a glance, all the way down to I want to look at every last gory detail is really ideally what you'd be able to do. And if your tools can't help you discover the root cause, don't use those tools. You're just driving yourself crazy. You're going to know about all these problems that you can't resolve. You need to know the root cause. Let the tools who know the dependency of everything give you that information. And if they can predict the future so that you can avert such resource contention storms, that would be ideal. 
and then just use those reports for what they're really useful for. So you've got a whole arsenal of things that you can bring to bear to ensure that your Zen App environment is uh, running smoothly. What we always want to do is get the most from our existing IT investment while ensuring an excellent end user experience. Both, right? I can ensure an excellent end user experience by just spending all kinds of money on my data center. And no one's going to hit any bottlenecks because I have like triple over provisioned. Eh, it's a waste of money. Um, so you really want to get a good balance between these two things, especially in these days where IT is always at being asked to do more with less. So the tools that you choose can really make a big impact on uh, how your budget's being divided, help you uh, keep everybody happy, and help you plan those future per uh, those future purchases. Okay, great. So we do have one question here, and that is whether or not this webinar will be available um, in record in a recorded form after this event. And yes, it will. Check back on our website uh, probably around Tuesday or so, and you'll be able to. Um, to view a recorded version of this event or forward it to folks. Great. And then I'll take some of these technical ones. Okay, so great. The, the first one here is uh, someone's asking, is app flow needed to communicate with the NetScaler? And the answer is yes, because polling is evil, right? You can't, you don't want to come across a network. The app flow, realize that the NetScaler is seeing everything. So it has a tremendous amount of data, and yet it can't speak. It can't present that data to you. That's where you need really good uh, management software um, to talk to that NetScaler. There is so much information coming out of the NetScaler, it's like opening a fire hydrant. So they've developed a protocol called AppFlow, and this protocol allows the streams of information to come out, and then your monitoring and management software is the catcher of that AppFlow stream. Catch the stream, pick out the important elements, present that to the administrator so that they can best, uh, you know, keep their environment running smoothly. So, yes, if you have a net scaler that's in place that doesn't have app flow turned on, I wouldn't be surprised because I would only turn it on if I had a catcher, like a Zangadi that can be getting that stream and then doing, you know, helping you and it's actually actionable information at that point. Okay. Uh, next question here. Can a recording be emailed out without a visual trouble ticket? And the answer is yes. In the Zangadi solution, uh, these recordings, you know, they're standalone recordings. So uh, those can be easily just attached to an email and sent around. So there's no need to, you know, go all the way in with visual trouble tickets if, if, if that's not appropriate for the particular issue. And, and that's one of the joys is, you know, you're the help desk person. You're sitting there and, you know, in comes an email and there's a recording attached to it. You can dispense with this very quickly and then have a long lunch. Uh, what types of switches are supported? Um, well, really any. And uh, there was a slide within the presentation where I went into the, the detailed protocols that are used to talk to the switches you know, protocols like NetFlow or Typical, so that you can get all of that information. You want to know about ports. You want to know about port groups. You want to know about throughputs, ACs, NACs, all of that. It's a lot of information that's flowing. And, and you want to get it from a number of different switches. See, just like the registration of the CMYK plates when you're doing printing, it's very important that this information that's collected from this various sources, it all needs to be correlated onto one time scale so that you can get an accurate picture. Uh, another question here, is Hyper-V supported? Yes, and I didn't mention that explicitly, but on the Zangati solution, we support both the, uh, both the VMware and the Hyper-V. And uh, da, 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 that might be it. Let me see. Uh, nope, nope, here's one more. Uh, can the administrator change which information is displayed on the dashboard? Well, certainly with Zangata you can, right? It's like a mashup. So each of those columns and each of those rows that are showing on your dashboard, there's a little pull down in the upper right-hand corner, and you can say what you want to show in that rectangle, right? Because you know your environment. You know the things you need to be looking at, the problem spots, and you're going to want to have those right on the right on the screen immediately where you can see it. And then other details you'll drill in deeper to get to. So, yeah, certainly with the Zangati, you know, these, these, these dashboards, you know, they're configurable. Think of mashup technology um, so that you can just have the right stuff in front of your eyes. 
And uh, let me look through a little more. Uh, that That is pretty much it for now. So um, with that... Uh, yeah, that's great. Thank hand you it so back much, to, Tom. Yeah. That was wonderful. Um, if you have any further questions, please feel free to email us. Or um, you can also visit our website for more information. And like I mentioned, the recording of this event will be available on our website early next week. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.